Three city where the fog hit hangs thickly. I first set my eyes and cat up. Hello, and welcome to the Bard's Truth with your host, the Green Bard. I want to thank you so much for your support of this YouTube channel. I've been doing this for about six months and I'm really enjoying it. I'd like to continue doing it, but I do need to grow a little bit more in order to make that feasible. So please, um, when you watch one of my videos, like and share and uh, please subscribe if you're watching these videos and are not yet subscribed it really does help the channel thanks a lot this is the dire wolves of winterfell volume 3 part 5 the night wolf and the shadow pack covering Arya and nymeria in a dance with dragons slash the winds of winter a dance with dragons the blind girl this chapter wolf dreams are mentioned three times we're also reminded of Arya's death list Another thing about her that the Faceless are aware. Could they actually want her to follow through on some of the names on the list? Wrath comes into play in the Mercy chapter later. She opened her eyes and stared up blind at the black that shrouded her, her dream already fading. So beautiful. She licked her lips, remembering. The bleeding of the sheep, the terror in the shepherd's eyes, the sound the dogs had made as she killed them one by one, the snarling of her pack. Game had become scarcer since the snows began to fall, but last night they had feasted. Lamb and dog and mutton and the flesh of man. Some of her little gray cousins were afraid of men, even dead men, but not her. Meat was meat, and men were prey. She was the night wolf, but only when she dreamed. The blind girl rolled onto her side, sat up, sprang to her feet, stretched. Her bed was a rag-stuffed mattress on a shelf of cold stone and she was always stiff and tight when she awakened. She padded to her basin on small, bare, calloused feet, silent as a shadow, splashed cool water on her face, patted herself dry. Sarah Gregor, she thought. Dunson, Raff the Sweetling, Sir Illyn, Sir Merrin, Queen Cersei, her morning prayer. Or was it? No, she thought, not mine. I am no one. That is the Night Wolf's prayer. Some day she will find them, hunt them, smell their fear, taste their blood. Some day. She thinks of herself as the Night Wolf. Her identity as a Stark seems not to be getting weaker, but perhaps stronger. She just needs to hide her nature until night. Not that it is any true secret to the House of Black and White. They hear her reciting the names of these enemies of House Stark, no doubt, no doubt. The phrase Night Wolf is a mini theme appearing across this chapter and next and it is highly connected to her identity, her Stark identity, her direwolf identity. Deny it, though she may try. The next passage shows that her sensory deprivation of blindness is not only enhancing her warging ability, but it also enhances her other senses, smell in this case. She knew the way to the kitchens, but her nose would have led her there even if she hadn't. Hot peppers and fried fish, she decided, sniffing down the hall and bread fresh from Uma's oven. The smells made her belly rumble. The night wolf had feasted, but that would not fill the blind girl's belly. Dream meat could not nourish her. She had learned that early on. It's good that she learned that she could not nourish by eating inside the wolf. It seems that Bran had a tougher time with that lesson. The next section is less about Nymeria, though. It becomes clear that she is definitely skin-changing a cat again at this point. She seems to have developed the ability to do it consciously and not just while sleeping. Yes, I know that you're the one who has been hitting me. Her stick flashed out and cracked against his fingers, sending his own stick clattering to the floor. The priest winced and snatched his hand back. And how could a blind girl know that? I saw you. I gave you three. I don't need to give you four. Maybe on the morrow, she would tell him about the cat that had followed her home last night from Pinto's. The cat that was hiding in the rafters, looking down on them. Or maybe not. If he could have secrets, so could she. Later. And come the morning, when the night wolf left her and she opened her eyes, she saw a tallow candle burning where no candle had been the night before, its uncertain flame swaying back and forth like a whore at the happy port. She had never seen anything so beautiful. The sensory deprivation 
possibly aided by whatever substance slash drug is in those scented candles, allowed her to develop this skin-changing skill quite quickly, similar to how Bran developed his warging skills while hiding in the crypts. After she unmasks her tormentor, they give her vision back, so one might assume that the main point of the blinding was to drive or at least accelerate her development of this skill. While she has been skin-changing a cat at least part of the time, being the Night Wolf seems also to indicate that the nightly dreams are becoming an integral part of the fabric of her identity. While she is playing the part of no one, she is actually becoming more a skin-changer and clinging to her identity as a Stark and a warg, at least nightly. How many dreams is she having with Nymeria and how many with the cats? We have no reference to answer this question, but I gotta believe there still is a lot of Nymeria in her nightly rituals. A Dance with Dragons, The Ugly Little Girl Nightwolf comes up twice again in this chapter, indicating that she is continuing to have the dreams and to consciously skin change cats, even though the dreams are not specifically mentioned. The blow left her cheek stinging, but she knew that she had earned it. Thank you. Enough slaps, and she might stop chewing on her lip. Arya did that, not the night wolf. I do deny it. Later. You lie. I can see the truth in your eyes. You have the eyes of a wolf and a taste for blood. Later. Arya bit her lip. She did not know what she wanted. If I leave, where will I go? She had washed and stripped a hundred corpses. Dead things did not frighten her. They carry them down here and slice their faces off. So what? She was the night wolf. No scraps of skin could frighten her. Leather hoods. That's all they are. They cannot hurt me. Do it! She blurted out. In that passage, we got a direct reference to her warging, mentioning her taste for blood and the eyes of a wolf in the same sentence. I take this as clear evidence of my prior supposition that they had definitely taken notice of her nightly dreams. I dare say that they actually want her for this ability. The Winds of Winter. Mercy. The Faceless pretend to insist she become no one in an attempt to exert control over her, while they actually want her for her ability as a warg something we know to be intrinsically tied to her identity as a Stark by now. They may even want her for her people-to-kill list, especially since she does it as a prayer, and they are ostensibly a religion. It seems that they are aware of Raph's visit, and put her in the Mercy identity specifically to kill Raph, and mess up the negotiations with the Iron Throne and the Iron Bank. She's oblivious to this possibility, though, obviously. Further, she is seemingly taught to use glamour and masks to hide her identity in this chapter. I believe that her skin-changing power can be used to help her develop the magic of glamour as well. With the Mercy identity, a lot of things change for Arya. She is in a much more grown-up scenario and uses sex appeal to kill Rafford. Given that Rafford might have recognized her face, glamour was probably critical to this mission, and working in a mummer's troop is probably the best place to practice such. Further, the idea of using a mask alone is highly questionable. Certainly, the magic of glamour aids the ability to believe in her transformation into mercy. That transformation does not affect her wolf identity, though, as we get one final mention of a wolf dream in this sample chapter. She woke with a gasp, not knowing who she was or where. The smell of blood was heavy in her nostrils. Or was that her nightmare, lingering? She had dreamed of wolves again of running through some dark pine forest with a great pack at her heels, hard on the scent of prey. This is definitely a dream of Nymeria. She is a Stark, no doubt, no doubt. This is a fact no one can doubt. <laughs> Postscript. The bond of Arya and Nymeria is extremely strong despite their physical separation since early in the first book. Even when they are separated by the narrow sea, Arya constantly has wolf dreams of Nymeria's movements. Thematically, their bond is similar to that of their brothers and sisters. Their personalities still mirror each other. Nymeria has proven to still embody her role as Arya's protector from afar when possible. Yet Arya was put into many unsafe situations, so this separation is not ideal. Hopefully it does not come back to haunt the pair. It has caused Arya to be a lone wolf as well, but also to strengthen her body and her supernatural abilities. In the Riverlands, Arya began having wolf dreams and to exercise some control of Nymeria's actions therein, i.e. Cat's Rescue.
In Bravos, partially because of sensory deprivation, she has developed the ability to skin change other beasts and to use glamour magic as well. Nymeria, for her part, has become the leader of an enormous, bold pack of wolves in the Riverlands. The pack protected Arya throughout her travels in the Riverlands. Later, with Arya in Bravos, they seem to be selectively attacking enemies of House Stark, as evidenced in Jaime and Brienne's chapters. When Arya returns to Westeros, look for Arya's power and Nymeria's pack to be major movers in how the story unfolds. Shout out and attribution as always goes to those who've come before me, including Rocky Rockington and Preston Jacobs. Also, thanks to my wife and daughter for the voiceover and art. Thanks to the great A Song of Ice and Fire artists whose contributions I use in these videos. Without it, we could not do this. If you enjoy this content, you can also consider supporting us on Patreon. Crying cockles and muscles, alive, alive, oh. Crying cockles and muscles, alive, alive.